What is happening guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. I'm talking about my experience so far with Instagram Reels and how I'm actually able to leverage Instagram to pay for my M4 GTS. Now really the amount that I'm getting paid by Instagram for Instagram Reels could be applied obviously to anything within your budget. Today I'm just keeping it related to car content so we're gonna say that Instagram Reels is technically paying for my M4 GTS. If you guys follow me on Instagram you've probably noticed lately that I'm posting a ton of Reels. I really don't post any photos anymore. I will once in a blue moon but hardly any photos anymore. It is all Instagram Reels which are or like short videos, you might see YouTube making them. Basically all of these companies are following suit from TikTok. And the future of content as we know it right now is short length video. Whether we like it or not, that is what is working, that is what people are interested in, and it's sort of a tough pill to swallow. I understand a lot of people are not happy with that direction, but you really can't fight things like this if you are a content creator. You sort of just need to change, move, adapt, and work with it. What I always tell people is even if you don't enjoy the type of content that is hot right now, find a way to make it work within your niche and find a way to make it enjoyable for what you do as a content creator. If you're into like a lot of cinematics and stuff like that, find a way to make shorts that are cinematic or reels that are cinematic. If you're into more like how-to videos, find a way to really condense how-to videos into shorts or reels. You guys get the point. Just find a way to adopt the concept and still be able to put out content that you're proud of, but at least with that you are changing with the times and challenging yourself to do something new and different. Now I know that not everyone on this channel really cares about creating content because some of you are just here for cars, but I also know that some of you on here are interested about the journey and I share a lot about my journey as a content creator, someone who's just into cars and how I can leverage creating content to pay for a lot of things that I have in my life, like my cars. So I've actually been on TikTok for like pretty much since the beginning. I adopted that app pretty early because I did sort of see where content was going. I wasn't really even sure if it was gonna work out like that. I just wanted to make sure if it did, I had experience doing short length content and kind of understood what TikTok was all about. The reality is attention spans are getting shorter and shorter. And that is unfortunately where a lot of video content is going. That is the direction that it's going and that is what advertisers are paying for. So if you're someone like me, who does this for a living, you really do need to adopt some of these things, morph some of your content to make it work with other platforms like TikTok. TikTok tends to adopt the trends before Instagram Reels or like YouTube Shorts over there. So I'll make all the content on TikTok and then carry it over to Instagram Reels or YouTube Shorts. So when I first started out with Instagram Reels, I was not monetized, but the great thing about Instagram Reels is you can have zero followers, you can have no traction on the app, and you can gain an audience and get views very, very easily. You can get a lot of them. Now this really levels the playing field for people who don't have a following already, but they want to start gaining a following, or even possibly turn this into a job for yourself and be able to pay yourself with making content. Now I'll tell you right away, it's not gonna happen overnight. It'll take you a while to get to that point, but if this is something that you're already interested in, it's like why not rewash the content and make it work with other short length content apps like Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. So I've been making Instagram Reels for quite a long time. I didn't make a ton of them in the beginning. I was just kind of putting them out every now and then, but I noticed right away that they would get a ton of views sometimes, just completely random. And I wasn't monetized in the beginning, but I had friends who were monetized under the Reels Play bonus. And some of them even had a much lower follow, a much smaller following than I did. And they were making really good money, like thousands per month. Even though I was making a lot of Reels, Instagram didn't monetize me or give me the Reels uh, bonus play, a uh, play bonus option for quite a few months until I was making Reels on a regular basis. As soon as I got monetized, I wanted to try something new. So I really did stop posting a lot of photos and I focused more on making Instagram Reels and just taking a lot of like the TikToks that I had already created and started putting them up on Instagram and just seeing how they would perform. When I first started with Instagram Reels and I was monetized in that first month that I was monetized, I only made, I think I made 300 and some dollars. It was like $350, which is not bad. That's more than I've ever made in a month comparatively to TikTok. I think TikTok only pays me like 30 some dollars a month and I'll get millions of views. Their payout is trash compared to some of these other platforms. So from what I've noticed, Instagram Reels, they're putting the most amount of money into their real bo 
bonus plays. They really want to push short length content. They have a lot of money allocated for that. So if you can get into the program, it's a great thing. I mean, you can make some decent money. I know people who really don't have a big following at all, but they make thousands of dollars per month using Instagram reels. So the first month that I did it, which was four months ago when I first got monetized, I made a little over $300. I was putting out one reel, maybe every couple of days, every day, two days, something like that. It wasn't a ton of reels, but I was, I was still doing it actively. And the type of reels that I was putting out really weren't like viral reels. They were really only focused on like my cars and like what I was doing with my stuff, which is a good concept in the beginning, but I'll tell you sort of how I've changed and adopted a different concept when it comes to making content for Instagram reels. You have to think about it like this, like not everybody in the world, not everybody in the world is going to be interested in your car. So you need to find a way to make the content with your car or whatever you're filming or whatever you're putting up on Instagram Reels to be a bit more viral, to make it work with a broader audience. There's a lot of different ways you can do that and you guys can look at what I'm doing or of course go online and, and see what other people are doing, but there's a lot of different ways that you can go ahead and do that. So the first month was a little over $300 and I was posting every now and then. I probably put up a real video once every two days. The second month, I actually went up to about $500 and I was still sort of doing the same thing, maybe posting a bit more frequently, but nothing had really changed with the way that I was doing content. The next month after that, I actually took a month off of all social media, which I think everybody should do, especially if you do this for a living, sometimes it's good to just take a break from social media. I don't think social media in general is very good for you. That's just me being completely honest, but of course we all, we all have our own ideas of social media and what we think about it, and it can be very good. It can bring people together, it can create business opportunities, but at the same time, I feel like sometimes everyone needs to take a, a break. But then the fourth month that I got back into it, I said, all right, we're gonna hit it hard this month. And this would have been in August. So today is actually September 1st, probably September 2nd for you guys right now who are watching this. But I decided that I was going to go hard in the paint in August. So I was gonna post as much, as many reels as possible. And I was also going to change up the content a little bit. I was going to create different types of videos, include a lot of different style of cars, talk to other creators and ask them if I could repost their video as long as I tag them and give them credit. And I posted last month about three to four to even sometimes five videos, reels per day. I really wanted to see what the difference would be if I just went all in on Instagram reels. I like to do this every now and then with different platforms because it gives me an idea of what's actually possible when it comes to monetizing a lot of these creator platforms. So your boy went all in. I created about four to five reels per day. Got some pretty decent views. Minimum, I was always getting like 10,000 views per video, but I got a few that were in the millions. So I was, I was trucking along. I mean, these aren't like super viral videos. I know people who get way more, but again, we are sticking with one niche which is automotive. So you have to think about people who make viral content on Instagram or YouTube. A lot of it is pretty broad. Like if you look at Mr. Beast, right? These ideas are, for one, they're just grandioso ideas, but they're also things that anybody can watch. Not anyone, not everyone is going to watch car content. It's only gonna be car people. So you're greatly reducing the amount of eyeballs that are going to get onto your content. This applies to everything. YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, no matter what it is. All of these algorithms already know the type of content that you're putting out. And those are the type of people, for whatever they're interested in, that it's going to push it out to. So when you have someone like Mr. Beast, for example, they're obviously making these videos where pretty much anyone is going to be interested in that because he does things like game shows or like trending topics that are pretty broad. Whereas with us or me, I'm creating car content. So strictly my audience is automotive. So you have to think about how you can expand in the automotive community when it comes to content creation without really pigeonholing yourself into only one thing. Now, obviously I'm already breaking down my niche even more because I'm primarily a BMW content creator. So you also have to get creative in that way. You have to find ways to broaden what you're doing, even though it is a video that's based on like a BMW, how can we broaden the idea of that content and bring more eyeballs in so it's not only BMW content. So hopefully that all makes sense. But in this last month, when I went hard in the paint in August, was posting four to five reels per day, sometimes even more, I ended up bringing in enough to pay for the note on my M4 GTS. So really you could apply that to any 
car that you own, it could be your mortgage, it could be your rent. But my goal was to at least get the car paid for with just Instagram Reels. Now, anytime that I'm starting out with, you know, like YouTube or TikTok or Instagram or any of my affiliate accounts, I always try to set a goal. How many things in my life or lifestyle can I get paid for by these content creation apps that I use? That's obviously my job. So, you know, YouTube pays for like my lifestyle, everything I need, my rent, my food, my bills. But this was sort of a fun game because for me personally, Instagram has never paid me for anything. So I wanted to see if I could create a new revenue stream from scratch, how fast I could do it and how much I could actually get out of it right away. So in August, posting four to five reels per day, I made over a thousand dollars on Instagram reels, which actually isn't that much. All things considered, I know people who are making way more, three, four, five times that. And I think it just all comes down to the account and the views that you're getting, but also the way that Instagram monetizes your reels. If you look at mine, for example, I could make potentially $35,000 per month on Instagram reels, but I would have to get like 350 million views, like something just insane and pretty much unattainable. As hard as I went this month, I only got 2.7 million views for the entire month. And that paid out a little over $1,000. That is a ton of views. And who knows, maybe that will increase over time. I know for sure that the more that I've made reels, the more that I've gotten better at it, the more consistent I've gotten, and the more views and money I've seen. So I'm just gonna keep trucking down this road and see what happens in the future, but it's kind of cool that I've gotten to a monetary point where it's now paying for the GTS in addition to some other things. My car payment on the GTS is not $1,000. I put a good chunk of money down on the GTS to make sure that I didn't have high payments. But it's kind of cool to say that Instagram Reels, which was this income stream that I didn't even have four months ago, is now paying for my car. Something that I think is kind of neat and it really doesn't take a whole lot of time. Like I'm already making a lot of these videos for YouTube Shorts, TikTok, stuff like that. So I'm really just like rewashing it and throwing it up on Instagram. But yeah, that is what we're at right now. A little over $1,000. So next month, I'm going to try and get over $2,000. I want to see if I can double that. I don't know how I feel about posting 10 reels per day, but we will try something out like that. I also sort of feel like if you put too many videos out, it might hurt the performance of previous videos, but I don't know. I don't really know how the algorithm works on Instagram reels, and this is why I'm sort of testing it out. Just throwing as many videos at it as possible, different styles of videos to see what would happen. I'm starting to do the same thing with YouTube Shorts. You guys are gonna see a lot of shorts on this channel. If you don't like those, I'm sorry, just ignore them. But really, that's just me testing out the platform and seeing what works and what doesn't work. All of these things are sort of interesting to me. And even when it comes to making videos like this, that is really what I do. I'll just throw shit at the wall and see if it sticks and just try different techniques over and over again. And I think that's the best way to grow as a content creator. Kind of sad to see that Instagram is no longer really a photo app. Like that is how we all got into Instagram was just posting photos of our cars and that was really how we gained the following that we have now or we're trying to get in the past it's a little bit unfortunate that photos are just sort of not as important anymore in the social media world I love photography obviously I've been very involved in photography especially automotive photography for a long time I also love video though and I've always been interested in creating video and so it's pretty easy for me to adopt this new style of content, which really isn't that new, you guys. We have been moving in this direction of short length content for a long time now. It's just that now that a lot of these platforms are really pushing short length content, is that people are starting to wake up and realize it. I'm pretty in tune with a lot of the other creators and a lot of the bigger creators, especially ones that are into photography. Peter McKinnon, for example, just made a video about Instagram and now making shorts. And he is someone who obviously is a great photographer. Makes really good videos too, but I mean, he's known as this really well established photographer and the photography side of Instagram is sort of just being ripped away. Like it's not as special or unique as it once was. I firmly believe that Instagram is no longer a photography app. I think it's a, I think it's a video app. I think it's a lot like TikTok and some people are going to hate that. Some people just despise TikTok and I totally get that. But the reality is that's where we're headed.
whether you like it or not. That is where content is actually going. Facebook has their own version of shortened videos, Instagram reels, TikTok videos, YouTube shorts. All of these apps are trying to be TikTok because TikTok was really like the first one to start getting viral videos like that. It's kind of cool because you can have zero following and you can put out these short length videos and get millions of views without having any subscribers or followers. So if you have a very small account and you're looking to grow it, short length content short length video content. Look at what other people are doing, look at what cre other creators are doing, and if you have the time or the desire to do it, um, it's a great way to build an audience. Anyways, I thought this would be an interesting video topic. If you guys are interested in this at all, leave a comment down below. If you guys know if you wanna hear about more of this style of content, I do enjoy talking about this type of stuff because it is my job. Aside from all the modifications and the cars that we build on this channel, content creation is a huge part of that. And so really finding the right methods to push this content onto these different platforms is an important part of that. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.